Now, not only are you bought with a price, but Hebrews says this, that Jesus, Hebrews 9, 12, he says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. Now, let's just stop for a second, okay? He says, not by bl blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered into the holy place, talking about the holy place in heaven, having obtained eternal redemption for us. His blood paid our price. Now, here's what I want you to stop and understand. You may be listening via YouTube. You may be listening via LFBI. Uh, I don't know who would be listening, but you may believe in the whole thought that you can lose your salvation. Just look at this verse for a second. He says, listen, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal. Now, you know what the word eternal means? Forever. Infinity. Eternal redemption. In other words, eternally paying the price. You owed a debt that, had been pay, that hadn't been paid that you could not pay on your own. And so when Jesus comes by and says, listen, I'll cover that. I'll pay that price. I'll redeem their sin. I'll redeem and pay for their debt. And I'm going to do it eternally. Which means once you get saved, you are saved eternally. You've been bought by the blood of Christ forever. Now, here's what's interesting. Some people believe you can lose your salvation. In context, he's referring to blood and goats. And if you go into verses uh, before or right after this, verses uh, 13 and 14, I believe it is, he talks about the, uh, the goats, uh, blood, and, and the ashes and, and all that. Man, if those things were able to cover sin for one year, if a lamb can cover it, a, a, an animal can cover you for one year, then how much longer can the blood of Christ last? That's why we have an eternal redemption. Now, the next star, which is going to be on the opposite side of El Janubi. Now, get the picture. Here's the balancing scales. This is the price that covers. Here we are over here on the... Uh, on the uh, El Janubi, we're a deficient price. Now all of a sudden, let's look at the gamma star, or the, the third star in here, connected to the beta star coming down to the left, is Zubin Ark Rabi, or Akarib, or however you pronounce it, it's A-K-R-A-B-I-E, meaning the price of the conflict, or the price of the war. This could be referring both to the battle with evil on the cross, um, the Southern Cross Constellation is a deacon of L Libra, as well as Armageddon itself. So let's talk about this. Now, here's what happens. We have a balancing scale that's dipped in the wrong direction, that we are found in wanting, that we don't measure up. And so Jesus comes along and says, I'll cover the cost. I will tilt the scales back in their favor. And order to do that, the opposite side, so if we are on this side and the scales need to be tilted in our favor, then the opposite side has to be affected. What's it going to cost or what is going to be the process in order to get the scales to balance back in our direction? Well, we need the other side of the scales to be affected. Or in other words, the price. What is going to be the price to cover the cost? Right? Now, we know that the, the star means the price uh, of the war, the price of the conflict. And as we said, uh, this can have multiple connections here. We can talk specifically about the Battle of Armageddon. Okay? We know that at the end time, that our Redeemer uh, is going to not only redeem, he's already redeemed you and I through the blood of Jesus Christ, but he's going to redeem this world. Remember, this world was cursed. This creation was cursed. And so the blood of Christ that lifted the curse from you and I is going to be the same blood of Christ that lifts the curse on this planet. The ground was cursed. I mean, all this was cursed. Okay? Now think about this. Uh, we talk about being sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, this is, this is interesting. I don't have it on the screen. I, uh, I just want you to think about this for a second. Okay, so you and I know that we're eternally saved, right? But we haven't been fully redeemed. 
And, and I know people are thinking, whoa, whoa, what do you mean by that? Right, hang with me. I've been fully saved. I'm eternally saved, but I'm waiting for full redemption. You say, how do you know that? Because he said, listen, I'm going to save you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an earnest money. I'm going to give you a down payment price. And what that is, is called the Holy Spirit of God, according to the book of Ephesians, that he placed inside you as earnest. And he says, you're going to be sealed onto the day of redemption. In other words, yes, I am fully saved, but I am still living in this prison called my flesh. And so I battle each and every day of my life with sin because... I am now, I'm still living in here in the flesh. I've got a new man on the inside, and I've got an old man here, and they battle every day. But I'm looking forward to the day in which I get fully redeemed and no longer have to deal with a cursed flesh. I knew how I have a new body at that time. Well, the same way the world, Jesus died on a cross 2,000 years ago, but if you look outside, Okay, what we're dealing with, I mean, look at all the mess. I mean, you look at, you look at Harvey, you look at Irma and the, the earthquakes and the hurricanes and the fires and, and, and look at the curse that is on the ground. You look at the governmental systems and how that Satan is the prince and the power of the air right now. He's, he's doing unbelievable things with the power of darkness on this planet. But there's coming a day of full redemption. All right? The full conflict. And what I would tell you is the price of war not only applies to the cross, but it applies to the end times Armageddon. Yes, he bruised his heel on the cross while he was hitting Satan, but he's going to crush Satan's head later on. And now think about that. Satan bruised his heel, but he's going to crush his head later on. And here's what's interesting is yes, he paid the redemption price for you and I and our sin there, but he's coming back again to lift the curse off this planet in the midst of the Armageddon war or the price of war. But that's not where, really where I want to go with it. For 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, For he hath made him, talking about Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So in other words, what we've got going on here is the price of the conflict. In order to get the scales to turn back, there had to be a price paid. And what that price was, was the cross of Calvary, where Jesus Christ left the throne room of heaven, put down what some people call the royal diadem, and derobed himself as king of kings and lord of lords, came down here, was born of a virgin, lived 33 and a half years of absolute sinless perfection, died on a cross after being having his beard plucked out, being whipped with a cat of nine tails, and why he was nailed to that cross, God the Father took all sin, past, present, and future, and placed it upon him, and according to the book of Galatians, that he was made a curse for you and I, so that you and I could be set free. So in order for the price of the conflict, in order for him to cover your cost, in order for him to tip the scales back in your favor, he had to come to this planet, die on a cross, give his life, shed his blood, and be buried. And for three days, enter in to, uh, to, to the innermost parts of the earth. And he preached to Abraham's bosom, but yet he preached unto the spirits over in hell. And, and you can read all about this in the Word of God. But it was the price of the conflict. And after three days, he rose victorious and he has now taken away uh, the sting of death and the vi victory of the grave, or the sting of the victory of the grave. All right, now notice what he says. All right, the prince of the conflict, however, is also on the cross, where the payment was made for our sins, and spiritual evil was thus conquered. So, if we look at Libra, the sacred altar or balance also shows that our lives fall short of God's standard. The price is deficient 
We are weighed in the balance and found wanting, but the price that covers is the atonement made by Messiah for all of humanity, who paid the price by his conflict against evil and shed his blood to blot out our sins. So when you look up at Libra, that's the story you get. You were falling short. Jesus said, I'll cover that cost and died on a cross for you and I to get the scales to balance out in your favor so that you could stand before God as absolute righteousness. Now, before I go on, and the reason I want to do this is in order to understand the full effect of Libra, there are decans that are constellations. Now, remember, there's only 12 where you have the elliptic or the road or the pathway of the sun that goes through it. And the sun would go across here. But just above that and just below that, just north of that is Corona. Below that is Lupus. And then we have what's known as the Southern Cross that many of you and I cannot see in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, the, you have to go further south in order to see that. Now, all these tie in. Now, just as I think probably most of you, if you are a pastor or a teacher of the Word of God, or if you sit in a good Bible-believing church week in and week out, what you'll find is a pastor or a teacher of the Word of God is going to preach or teach from a specific context for a text of Scripture. And in this case, God's main, con or main text is Libra. But just like any pastor today, any good Bible student, any good Bible teacher, if this is your text, then what you're going to do is go get supportive text to go with it. In other words, if you're going to preach on something, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're preaching on uh, the rock in the wilderness, then you may be over there telling the story about how Moses struck the rock and the rock gave forth water and, and how that rock is, is pictured as Christ. In order to do all that, you end up in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, where the Bible says that that rock was Christ. And man, we go around and we talk about how Jesus was struck for us on the cross. And we, we use supporting text to help us with our main text. Well, that's what God's doing right here. And so we have Libra, the main text, and what we need is some supporting text to go with it. And so let's look at three specific supporting texts. One is the Southern Cross, okay? It's right here. Now remember, in order to understand what's going on in Libra, you need to understand that the fact of Libra is balancing the scales, right? The price of the conflict. What was the price of the conflict? The dying on the cross. So we have this southern cross that goes along with it. The southern cross, the Hebrew word for this is Adam, which means cutting off. Which is interesting that in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, that the Bible talks about uh, Messiah. He says, after three score and two weeks, okay, now he says, after three score and, and, and two weeks, Messiah be cut off. In other words, he's talking about, when you go over there, the book of Daniel has a prophecy about 70 weeks of years. And what it means is after 62 Weeks of years, Messiah would be cut off. Okay, In other words, he would be nailed to a cross. And isn't it interesting, the exact terminology that your English Bible uses in Daniel 9, 26, is the exact terminology that the Hebrews called the Southern Cross. It was talking about being cut off. And that's what happened for you and I. And it says he was cut off, but not for himself. He didn't need to die. He died for you and I and for the Jewish people. Now, the other constellation that goes along with this is lupus. Okay, Lupus is this animal that is obviously either dying. Now, Southern Cross is here. This uh, Centaurus is here. And then lupus is right here. And the spear is going through it. And it is an animal that is obviously a victim. Okay, Lupus, the slain victim also known as Sura, the lamb in older star maps. In other words, right here, oh, I'm sorry, right here, it, it's a wolf that's dying. But if you go and look at some ancient star maps and some ancient cave drawings, it is not seen as a wolf, it is seen as a lamb and is lying backwards dying. And it's being 
killed by Centurus. Now, what's interesting is when you go back and you study what Centurus is, and we'll get to this when we talk about Sagittarius. The Centurus, uh, which this is one of multiple that are in the, the sky, is an animal with two natures, okay? And it is a picture of Jesus Christ. He is the only person who's ever walked this planet with two natures. What's interesting is when you go and study Jesus and you start telling people he was 100% man, that he died on this planet in your and I's place as a man, but he was also 100% God. You say, well, how do you explain that? I don't know. I don't know that I can explain that. I know he was 100% God. He was 100% man. He had two natures, and that's exactly what this animal or this uh, beast represents is Jesus. Now, what becomes a little confusing is this. Now, wait a minute. If Centurus pictures Jesus and Lupus, the slain victim, pictures Jesus, well, then how does that make sense? I mean, after all, who killed Jesus? Was it the Romans? Well, the Romans were the instrument used to kill Jesus. They were, they were the ones who actually nailed him to the cross. They were the ones that issued the sentence on him. But somebody might come around and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. It wasn't the Romans. The Romans were trying to let him go. It was the Jews. The Jews are who killed him. Remember, they claimed, hey, give us Barabbas and you take Jesus and kill him and crucify him. So we can say, well, it was the Jews. And then you could get really spiritual and go, hey, man, it wasn't the Romans. It wasn't the Jews. It was me. It was you and I. It was our sin that killed Jesus. And and I understand, so far, there's an amount of truth to all three of them. Did the Romans actually kill him? Yes. Did, did the Jews be the one that pronounced it and made it happen? Yes. Was it my sin and yours there? Yes. Well, what about Satan? Is he the one that killed him? Well, we can see where the forces of evil were working against Christ. If you actually go and look, they were trying to kill, Satan was trying to kill him before he ever got to the cross. But the bottom line is, to be dead honest with you and to be biblical, John 10.10 10 tells you who killed Jesus. The Bible says, Therefore doeth my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. And listen to this, no man take it from me. So in other words, no one could have killed Jesus. The Romans, the Jews, you and I, Satan, no one had the power. It's interesting when Pilate had him before him and he said, do you understand I got the power to release you or kill you? And, and Jesus turns to him and goes, yeah, you don't have any power on me that hadn't been given from above. And all of a sudden Pilate went, uh, whoa, what is he talking about? And it started to freak him out a little. But here's the bottom line is the reason why we can see Jesus as the centurion taking out lupus as the slain victim as a picture of Jesus is because it's Jesus who laid down his life and took his own life for you and I. Now, the other constellation or the decan or the supporting text with our context of Libra is Corona the crown, okay? Now, Corona the crown can actually be seen uh, with these six stars that make up this crowned area. It's one of the few that are out there that you can actually picture without needing the aid or a help of all these drawings that go along with it. Now, we know that the corona, the crown, is a crown that was given to Christ. Now think about this. Just below Libra is the victim and the centurion and the cross. Or not the centurion, the cent centaurus and then the, the cross. But just above the scales is corona. Okay, And so what we know based on Hebrews 2, 9, but we see Jesus who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. And listen to this. Not only was he sent here for the suffering death, but now he is crowned with glory and honor. And because he died on the cross, because he laid down his life, because he laid his own life down and no man took it, he is now crowned with honor and glory. Now here's what's interesting. The Bible tells us in the book of Philippians that God has given him a name, and the word name means rank, all right? Giving him a name above every name. 
so that at the name of Jesus, every tongue is going to confess and every knee is going to bow. Listen, how did he get that? Because he was willing to die and humble himself, according to those verses right before that, humble himself on to the death, even the death of the cross. Now, so that's Corona, the crown. So in order to understand how in the world he's going to get that scale to tip back in our favors, he's going to have to come, lay down his life, die on a cross, and be crowned as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. By the way, it's not enough that he died for us. He had to rise from the dead, and he had to be ascended onto the throne, throne to sit at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for you and I. That is what completes the gospel. Right? Death, burial, and resurrection. You can't leave one of them out. He died on a cross. He was buried. He laid down his life. But he rose again on the third day and ascended unto the Father. And we now have a high priest in heaven making intercession for you and I. Now, point number two. So that's constellation of Libra. But now we're going to take the rest of our time, hopefully uh, get all this in. And we're going to talk about the constellation of Scorpio. Now, Scorpio is going to be the next one. Now, let's, let's stop before we even get to Scorpio. Abraham, come outside. I know you're down and out. I know you ain't got a whole lot going for you. And I know you're not impressed because I'm your great and exceeding reward. But I want you to do something for me, Abraham. Yes, God, what is it? I want you to look up and I want you to tell the stars. So he looks up and he starts with Virgo and he says, Virgin. And now he's going to start numbering off remember? And he's going to point Zareth, okay? And we got a Zareth. We have a seed who's coming of the virgin, and he's going to be the beautiful Lord, and, and he's going to be the sent one. He's going to be the second uh, uh, one of the, of the Trinity, and he's going to be the branch of the Lord, and, and, and yet he's going to come, and then he's going to go Libra. And so he gets to Libra, and once he gets to Libra, he's going to end up uh, sorry, I, I've got a, a, if you see me stopping here, I've got a horn that's going crazy out here and honking. So what happens is he gets up here and he's at Libra. And so now he, he, he starts counting off each one of them. And so you have Libra uh, has El Janubi, Zubin El Janubi, which is simply we are weighed in the balance and we come up deficient. And so then he moves on and he says, but here's a star at the top talking about how it's going to be covering the cost and get it to balance in our favor. Then it turns and goes to the next one, which is the price of the conflict. So, so far, Abraham's walked outside. He's been able to see this whole thing. And he's talking about each one of these stars. And he's telling the gospel story to God. Now, the next is Scorpius. All right, now when we look up in the stars, here is Scorpius. Now, Scorpius simply means uh, scorpion. All right, and as you, as you look up, you'll see how it works here. Now, we're going to break it down uh, and, and start breaking down. Here's Anti Aries, or Antares, uh, Shula, uh, Lesaith. Les all right, each one of these stars we're going to be breaking down. Now, so the, the scorpion is an insect that kills with its tail. Now remember that. Uh, you can go into, the old, or go into the book of Revelation and see the great red dragon and how he's dragging a third of the stars with his tail. And the tail is a big deal here. And so we go to look at this. The Akkadians called Scorpio Gertab. Uh, which means uh, the Caesar or the stinger. It's specifically about what's in the scale. And it means the place where one bows down. Now, it's interesting. Uh, when we think about the Antichrist, it's all about getting people to bow down. Uh, when he comes to this planet, or, and I believe he's already here, but when he comes into power, there'll be a brand new uh, uh, temple that's made, and, and he will go inside that temple at three and a half years in. He will sit down on the mercy seat and he will tell the world to worship him, bow down towards him. And remember, what Satan wants more than anything is to be worshipped. That's what Isaiah 14 is all about. The testing or the trying in the wilderness by Jesus. What goes on is, here's Jesus out here in the wilderness, and what he kept trying to get him to do is, man, I'll give you this. I'll do this. I'll do this if you'll just bow down and worship me. 
So today, Gertab is the name of one of the stars in the tail. Another star in Scorpio is Shalula, or Shalua, which is the Arabic word meaning for raised tail. Okay, so once again, if you can get the picture of the scorpion's raised tail coming back up, and what happens is that tail comes over the head and strikes forward. So it's, it's the stinger. Now what's interesting is when you look at Luke chapter 10, verse 17, and, the, and what happens is he sends 70 of them out, two by two, and he tells them, hey, I want you to go witness. I want you to go tell people who I am. And, and it says, and the 70 returned again with, uh, with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. And, okay, now here's what's interesting. So here, these guys, they go out, they're witnessing. All of a sudden, they're commanding demons around, right? And they're thinking, man, I'm the man. All right, this is awesome. I'm the man. I'm, I'm calling demons around. And they come back, and they're all excited, and I can just see them. They're gathered around the campfire, and hey, 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 man, were you able to call out some demons? Oh, yeah, I called them out. I, I was telling them all what to do. Okay, now, can you get the picture? That's what's going on. So Jesus comes around, and he says, yeah, that's cool, all guys. Uh, I'm glad they're subject. But listen here. He says, and he saith unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven, and behold, I give unto you power to tread on, look, look at the word, serpents, the snake, and scorpions. And so he's going to give you a two-creature reference to not only Satan himself, but the powers of Satan that work with him. Not only are they serpents or snakes, but they are scorpions. And he says, over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means hurt you. And by the way, he goes on and says, hey, but don't rejoice that you can call out demons. Rejoice in the fact that your name is written in a, above. Now, Revelation 9, 5, it's interesting. In Revelation 9, 5, the earth opens up and hell opens up. And this, this smoke rises up out of there. And they've got a king over them in chapter 9 called Abaddon or Apollyon. One's the Hebrew name, the other one's the, the Greek name. And, and I would tell you that it's nothing more than G Judas Iscariot being reincarnated. And, and he's going to come up out of the earth. And what he's going to do is lead these creatures, and let's read about these creatures, and it says, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be, should be tormented five months, and their torment was the torment of a, look at the word, scorpion, when he striketh a man. Now, here's what's interesting. So, when the earth opens up, and hell opens up, and this pit opens up, and Judas comes up there as the king of Abaddon or Apollyon, and what he does is he leads these locust-type beings. Now, they're not locusts. The, John's describing them. He talks about how they have hair of women, and they got teeth as lions, and what it's going to go on is they're going to go up here, and, and, and they're going to be like scorpions that sting, and once they sting an individual during this five-month period during the tribulation, the sting is going to be so excruciating. People are going to wish for death and want to die, but death is going to flee them. So in other words, if you're living and you get stung by this thing, the pain is going to be so great, you're going to want to die. You may even hang yourself. You may try to put a gun to your head and pull the trigger, and you'll feel every ounce of pain from the bullet, but you will not die. Death is going to flee you. And so what happens is, when, when you start looking into this, this sting is like that of a scorpion. Now what's interesting, I keep saying what's interesting, I think the whole Bible is interesting, but that's just kind of my catchphrase here. But what's neat, change words, I, what's cool is some people come around and go, oh no, 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 these these. These things that are coming up out of there, those are not actually demons. Those are, those are not scorpions. Those are not uh, locusts. They're helicopters, and they'll start explaining. Well, the only problem is when you cross-reference this, you can go to the book of Joel, and the book of Joel said that these creatures are going to climb up walls and go through windows. That is not a helicopter. Uh, I mean, we're talking about demons here, and God's describing them not only as scorpions in Luke, but he's describing their sting of that of a scorpion in Revelation. So, how about 1 Corinthians 15, 55? O death, where is thy sting? 
O grave, where is thy victory? All right? The sting, and that's not supposed to be crossed out, but the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. So we know that the sting of death is sin. So when we're talking about scorpions, and we're talking about stings, and we're talking about demons, and we're talking about demonic entities, and we're talking about death, well, so far, I haven't described much about this constellation of Scorpio, but so far, you've got to know it ain't good. It's obviously the enemy. Now, so the, the scorpion's tail portion was called Lesaith in the Hebrew, or Lesheia, yeah, Lesheia in the Chaldean, which means the perverse one. Right? The brightest star in, scorpion, or in the scorpion is Ant Antares, or a form of anti-Ares, meaning against the lamb. I'll come back to that. All right, so let's talk about this perverse one. The whole tale means the perverse one. And when you start studying what the perverse one is, you come to find out that it's nothing more than the Antichrist that will come and rule and reign upon this planet. All right? Now, he comes back and he lets you know that the star, dead center, right in the middle of Scorpio, is Antares. And it's the breakdown of anti Aries. Now, what we know is the word anti, meaning against or instead of. The Antichrist is against Christ, but it also refers to instead of Christ. Uh, another term for that is vicar of Christ. Study that out when you get a shot. All right. Anti Aries. Now, the word Aries is in reference to a constellation that we'll study later that talks about Aries the ram. Okay, talking about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as the ram or the lamb of God. Now, here's what's interesting is anti Aries against or instead of the lamb or the ram of God. Now, why is true that this constellation is in the opposite part of of the sky to Aries, the ram, the complete story is told by the surrounding constellations. Okay? So what we have is, here's our, so far what we've studied, here's anti-Aries, or Antares, right here, and here's the stinger, or the sting of death over here in the tail, with these, uh, the perverse one, the sting, the scorpion, this is the picture you're getting. Now, what happens is, when we start studying out who these other configurations are, the decans. Okay, so what we have is these decans. Now, here's the path of the sun going right through Scorpio on into the balancing scales of Libra. So, so far, we would have been starting and we're working our way this way, and we're going to be coming over here to Sagittarius. But we're in Scorpio right here. And right here is Antares, the main star. Over here is Lesaith, which is the stinger, the perverse one. And so what we have is this picture. Now, think about this. He looks like he's coming after Libra. Now, what we have just above it is a decan known as Ophiuchus. Okay, Ophiuchus is this man. He's also known as the strong man. Okay, so Ophiuchus is seen holding... A serpent, you can see the serpent, and it's called Serpens, uh, this snake that's running right through his hand, and he's got hold of the serpent right here, but his foot is right there on the head of Scorpio 